issue, man. It's official. Picking up the load. That's the hay right there. So let's be picking up that hay. All right, guys. So this is what we're looking like. Got the hay set up. About to strap it down, man. What's up guys, it's your boy Nell here man, and today I'm coming to you guys in a video, and guess what? Guess what guys, today is the official day man, where I picked up my flood bed. I'm gonna show you guys. Hooked up to it right now. Right now as we speak. Yeah, this is it right here. I'm excited. I'm in uh I'm in Missouri right now. And it's crazy because I was supposed to pick my flatbed up in Texas, but that had got canceled because uh, it just went wrong. I don't know. But originally I was supposed to pick it up in Texas. Then I was supposed to pick it up in Chicago. And then uh he just switched it to Missouri. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, but we got it, man. We in business. I'm excited. So uh, what I'm about to do now is I'm about to head over to Florida. And uh, I'm about to get all my equipment. You know, my tarps, my straps, my chains, my um, my edge protectors, um, and everything like that, man. All that good stuff to get the job done. So uh, I guess I'll see you guys there in Florida. What's up guys, so I'm in Florida right now. It is hot as hell. I'm telling you guys, I'm sweating. Do you guys see how dirty I am? I am extremely dirty. But yeah, I got my equipment. I got my two tarps. I got my straps. I'm gonna show you guys all my equipment. So yeah, see the two tarps? I got my chains right up in here in this box. Now if I come over here, I got more chains across right there and I got my got my pieces of a uh, 4x4 and I got and I got all my straps up in here straps blankets edge protectors you know everything I need extra wedges or extra extra winches excuse me but uh, yeah, I'm pretty much set, man. Um, I got the tool that's like makes it easier to wind up your straps. Like you hook it up to the trailer and it helps you wind it back up. Got all that stuff. Um, so I'm pretty much ready to go. I'm supposed to be getting my first load maybe tomorrow. So, and I think I'm most likely heading to the west, like California, most likely. If not California, I'm most likely probably gonna head to Oregon. That's what I was told. It's either Oregon or California. But I'm pretty much going to be running like from east to west, you know what I'm saying? Like pretty much. So yeah. Also, also, I have I have the tools to help me tighten up my uh, chains. I have my my winch bar right here. Winch bar. Probably the most important tool, or one of the most important tools in flatbed, man. If you don't got no winch bar, I don't even know. It's not even if you don't have a winch bar. You have to have a winch bar, man. So yeah, I have that. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited, but at the same time, I'm very nervous because this is going to be my first flatbed load ever. You know what I'm saying? So, brand new, but you know, I'm part of Flatbed Gang now. Hashtag Flatbed Gang. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes, man. But I'm about to park up, head to the truck stop, and take a shower because. It is hot right now in Tampa, Florida, dude. It's like, it's probably like in the 80s. Probably in the 80s, man. But yeah, man, I guess I'll just catch you guys when I'm picking up my load, man. And um, I'll take you guys with me on my trip. All right, guys, so it is the next day. If I look crazy right now, it's because I literally just woke up. So um, yeah, I'm about to go pick up my very first flatbed load. 
my appointment is at nine o'clock in the morning but i'm gonna try to be there a whole hour early so i'll get there around like eight ten ish but um i'm gonna do my pre-trip really quick and then i'm gonna head over to the location i'm supposed to be picking up at like a not like at a, a farm but like a like at a pretty sketchy area um but my very first load i'm supposed to be picking up hay so um yeah i'm not i'm not and it's not like i'm picking up i'm picking it up at a location that i'm not usually used to picking up loads you know what i'm saying like you know i'm so used to hauling um drive-in that you know drive-in we usually pick up in like uh distribution centers or you know we usually pick up in like pretty um pretty official areas you know what i'm saying um pretty big facilities i'm not used to picking up in like dirt road locations or uh you know what i'm saying places like that i guess i'm just gonna have to get used to it but yeah i'm gonna do my pre-trip really quick and then um we're gonna head over to the location man you guys that I'm picking this load up in Smithville Georgia I'm picking it up in Smithville Georgia and I'm dropping it off in good Oklahoma I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right but it's like it's literally spelt like could but with a G you know so I don't, I don't know but it's I know it's going to Oklahoma so um, I'm not sure when it's supposed to be dropping off but after I pick the load up, I'm supposed to be calling the calling the receiver, and I guess they'll tell me when they want me to drop the load off when I call them, because it does tell me it does say on the bill of lading that they want me to call them before I drop it off or before I get to the destination. So I'll just do that after I um I get loaded or I secure the load. And can we talk about how I was literally in Florida yesterday, guys? Like, bro. I can't even tell you guys the last time I was in Florida was probably in elementary school and that was like literally that was that was literally my last time being in Florida and yesterday was my second time ever being in Florida so Florida was pretty cool man I like how it gives off you know beachy vibes you know what I'm saying I got nice little trees and, and stuff like that I like it there yeah, I don't think I'm going to be going to Florida as often because Florida doesn't really have a good freight and there's not many loads coming in and out of Florida. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty horrible. As far as trucking goes, Florida is not really that good of a state, but I, I liked it there. It was pretty cool. It was just hot as hell, though. <laughs> like yesterday, literally, when I was in Florida, I think it was in the 90s, bro. So, but that's Florida for you, man. You know, I'm from New York, so I ain't really used to that kind of heat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? New York, this it's cold. Ain't, even in the summertime, New York ain't even, it's hot, but it ain't like Florida hot. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't get that hot. Man, same, same thing with Texas. I was literally just in Texas, like, last week. It was a, man... It was high 90s when I was in Texas. High 90s. Like, I'm not used to that kind of heat, man. I'm not. I felt like I was dying. Like, I had to bust out the shorts. I had to wear my, I was wearing my Crocs with no socks. Like, when do I ever do that? I, I never do that. If you know me, you know. 
I mean, not a lot, not a lot of people know me, but I'm just saying, like, the people that I, I'm around, I ain't really around nobody like that. But, <laughs> yo, I don't do that. That's not that's not like me to walk around with Crocs and no socks. Like I always wear socks, always. Whenever people go outside with no socks, it's kind of it, it kind of bothers me. But I might have to start doing that if I plan on um, being in these 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 states where it's just hot. Like that Texas heat is no joke, guys. No joke at all. I was sweating. Like I'm telling you, even after I took a shower, I would take a shower, get back to my truck, and I would just instantly feel like I gotta take another one. It was that bad. Back sweating, face sweating. It's just, I'm feeling all sticky and, and, and musty, and I don't know, man, it's just, it's a lot, man, it's a lot. I don't know how you people do it in Texas, man. I guess y'all just used to it, or, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, I just build different, you know what I'm saying? And I, y'all might have, y'all might say the same thing about us people that's from New York or us people that's like in the Northeast. Y'all might say we build different because we deal with the cold all the time. But if it was up to you, people, people in the, uh, let me know in the comments. Would you guys rather deal with being hot or deal with being cold? Me personally, I feel like I would much rather want to deal with being cold than being hot. But that's just me. You know what I'm saying? Especially as far as like sleeping goes, I feel like I can I can sleep in a, in a cold room. I can't really sleep in a hot ass room. I can't do that. Me like it's harder to sleep in a hot room than it is to sleep in a cold room, guys. So it's like if I'm dropping off a load in Texas or something, and I'm trying to go to sleep, and I'm not trying to run the truck all night, it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough cuz me I don't I don't idle my truck. I turn my truck off to save on fuel and uh you know, I don't, I don't really think idling the truck is all night. I don't really think idling the truck all night is good for your truck, you know what I'm saying? So I just turn it off. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I don't want to have no issues with my truck, no engine issues or anything like that. And um I'm trying to save money on fuel, you know what I'm saying? So I turn it off, bro. So you can only imagine those those Texas those nights I was in Texas. It was rough, man, because I had to every 15 minutes or so I would have to get up, turn the truck on for like a, for like for like half an hour, and then uh, turn it back off because I don't want to idle it. Just just to, just to keep cool, you know. But it's like after I turn my truck off, dude. Literally five minutes later, all it took is five minutes for me to get sweaty again and me to get all musty musty again and for the truck to be hot as hell it's like it, it was like clockwork man it's crazy bro but uh yeah <laughs> i'll just see you guys when i get to the location okay guys so apparently um i'm not going to be able to pick the load up at nine o'clock today because apparently the farmer is running late because they had issues and emergencies last night on the farm so they're not going to be able to load me up until like 12. so um i'm about to i'm about to like try to see if i can um just stay on the farm until 12. like just park on the farm until 12 because there is no there's really no parking for the rest of the way there and i don't feel like driving all the way back to um, an area that has truck parking, you know, because that's, that's kind of like a lot of waste of time and a lot of waste of uh, fuel too. So hopefully they just let me stay on the farm until 12. All right, guys, so I'm here now picking up the load. That's the hay right there. Supposed to be picking up that hay. But um, yo, I already almost got myself into a whole situation, guys. So this is what happened, right? So I wasn't sure where I was supposed to go coming here. Like I was confused. It's a whole bunch of flies. I was confused. So I had stopped in the um on the road and I was blocking a whole a whole side. So I walked in here to make sure this was the right location, which it is. And when I walked in here originally, a cop literally pulled up behind my truck and um he was asking me like, "Hey, like what what are you doing here like you're not you're not supposed to block 
what are you doing here basically so he, he asked me what, what was i doing here and i told him like hey i'm supposed to be picking up a load here i'm picking up hay um right in this location but the farmer isn't here yet i'm waiting for him so and i told him that i couldn't pull in because this is private property right but he told me to pull in anyway because i can't block one way uh, i can't block a whole side of the road and uh people drive all the time around here without even being aware of their surroundings and they speed right so so i pull in and then some guy comes and he's like this is his property so the hay the hay isn't even supposed to be here because this is his property so the guy that's loading me um he he got the hay here but he's not supposed to have it here because he doesn't this isn't his property basically so the cop was about to make it a whole case um but the guy he was really cool he said he said leave him alone you know he didn't do nothing wrong he just came here to pick up a load you know what i'm saying so i was about to get in trouble you know what i'm saying um and it's crazy because it's like yo this is my first load and i'm already getting into situations where you know i'm dealing with the police bro on my first load crazy let me go inside my truck because this is way too many flaws bro but um yeah i appreciate that man for real um, this is pretty much like a small town, basically. Like, I, I asked the cop. I was like, so basically, this is like one of those towns where, like, everybody knows everybody. And he was like, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So this is this, this right here. And the guy and the guy who owns this property, he owns, like, a lot of land around here, too. So it's pretty much, it's crazy. I just so happen to be picking up a load on his piece of land. I, the reason I wanted to record it, but I felt like since there was a cop, involved i didn't want to record you know what i'm saying because i feel like the moment a cop sees that you're recording it's like automatically like a switch like a switch just goes off because maybe the cop doesn't even want to be recorded you know what i'm saying so um yeah i just i just didn't even start recording it would have been good footage don't get me wrong but it, it was it's not even worth it bro i feel like if i was recording it would have been a completely different outcome you know so you know it is what it is man but i'll see you guys when the guy gets here all right guys so this is what we're looking like got the hay set up about to strap it down man Whew. guys guys oh my god these flies guys i finally finished strapping it took me you know i'm not even gonna say how long it took me because that's just embarrassing you know but that was light you know what i'm saying i was light. that was nothing you know but um yeah man what y'all think what y'all think i got i got two straps right here well i got one strap on the front two straps on this front one right here then i got one strap going on each of them like that what y'all think hey don't be scared to in the comments you know if y'all if y'all think i did a horrible job or y'all think i could have did something better you know give me feedback man that's the only way i'm gonna get better but i put put two back here just like i did in the front two back here and i put one strap on this back one right here so uh yeah bro Whew. now all i have to do is uh i got a ratchet strap my tarps on my um catwalk and then i'll be good to go see it's on my catwalk got a ratchet strap on oh that kicked my ass bro it, it really did i gotta scale it so first truck stop or whatever truck stop is near me hopefully it's a loves so i need to shower but i'm probably not gonna be able to shower tonight because it's probably gonna be uh it's probably gonna be no spots open because it's already six o'clock so i'm probably just gonna have to catch a shower tomorrow what's up guys so I'm dropping off the load today. Um, I'm about seven hours away. I'm in Louisiana right now. And uh, I'm dropping it off by like maybe 1.30. Um, I could pretty much drop it off at any time, but it's saying I'm gonna get there by 1.17 right now, but more than likely it'll be 1.30, 1.40ish. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what it's looking like right now. I have to call them and let them know that I'll be there around that time. I think, because I called them yesterday, and um, I'm pretty sure they said that the latest would be like 2 or 3 o'clock. 
so I'm kind of pushing it close but hopefully they can they can still unload me if I get there like maybe 20 minutes before they stop but yeah I'm about to do my pre-trip and then after I do my pre-trip we going to get on the road and head to the drop-off So as you guys see, I'm dropping this load off in the middle of, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Literally in the middle of nowhere, guys. Um, I need to get fuel like really bad. Um, there's a Love's truck stop like an hour and 12 minutes away from here. So I think that's where I'm going to go after I drop this off. Um, not even I think, I'm definitely going to go there. Um, but he said I should be looking, I called the guy. And he said I should be looking for a white barn. And uh, I think he's over there somewhere. Gotta be. But um, yeah, also when I go to the truck stop, I have to get coolant, man, because my coolant is low. Like my uh, my coolant light came on as well. So yeah, I'm just, it's just a lot of stuff happening right now. Low on fuel, need coolant in the middle of nowhere. So God forbid if something did happen, you know, to my truck, uh, you know, I'll basically be stranded. You know, the service out here ain't that good either. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, and I know y'all flatbedders, or us, you know, us flatbedders now, you know what I'm saying? Us flatbedders, we gonna, I'm new to this, but I know y'all drive to places like this all the time. And I know I'm gonna have to get used to that. Like in the middle of nowhere, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I ain't used to that, bro. I'm not used to that at all. But, uh, yeah, man. I'm about to drop this load off. This will be my first successful flatbed load, guys. And people really live in these areas. It's, it's crazy. Blows my mind. I 
did a I did a great job strapping this load. I did not have to tighten any of the straps one time. The whole trip, I did not have to tighten them. I got out and I looked, you know, um, what I did was I got out and looked every two hours. You guys might say like that might be a little tedious or whatever, but every two hours I checked to see if um, any of the straps got loose. None of them got loose at all. <laughs> so that's a good thing, right? Yeah, I think this is him right here. White barn. It's got to be him. Hello? I'm in a loader just come to me. Follow, follow me through all this maze and we'll okay, that, back there to and get you loaded. Okay, that's you in the yellow the yellow yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, all right. just follow me. Okay. Okay. Alright. Alright, so I guess he's just gonna do the unloading right here. Strap. Got it strapped. Uh, oh, he wants me to keep going. Okay. Ignore my windshield, guys. My windshield is extremely dirty. Extremely. This is unacceptable, guys. Keep coming? Jeez. Pause. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, right. Okay. Cool. All right, guys. As you guys can see, I'm unloaded. First load, first flatbed load is complete. You know what I'm saying? Whew. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry, I didn't get any footage of him unloading the trailer. Um, when he was unloading the trailer, I was too busy winding up my straps and um, yeah, putting putting the straps away. But by the time I was done doing that, he was basically finished. So uh, yeah, sorry I didn't get no footage of that. Maybe next video. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. I ain't gonna lie, I feel like flatbed is is is. is different it's fun it's exhausting but it's a challenge and i like that so yeah um definitely gonna keep at it man hope you guys enjoyed the video stay tuned for the next one oh i'm about to go to the truck stop and shop right now so bad. man then on top of that yeah am i gonna have to deal with this at every ship or receiver bro? like am i gonna have to deal with these flies bro Man, these flies, they just love flying in my face and then they fly into my truck trying to be my roommate. Like, bro, watch out, bro. I don't want no damn roommates. But, uh, all right, I'm done. I'm done. Seriously, this time. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hope you all enjoyed. It's been your boy Nell, and I'm out. Peace.